I hereby call to order. I would like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Senator Amy Marcos. Ma'am, thank you for uh, joining us. And uh, Senator uh, Bongo. Andyan ba online si Senator Bongo? Uh, who are both online. And uh, other members of uh, the Public Order and Dangerous Drugs, the Committee on Public Order and Dangerous Drugs, who are online. Thank you for attending to this hearing. Today, today's hearing is uh, composed of two parts. The first part is a continuation of our consideration of the bills regarding drug rehabilitation, including Senate Bill Number 242, authored by Senate, Senate President Soto III and Senator De Lima, and Senate Bill Number 1099, authored by Senator Cynthia Villar. Second, we shall also take into consideration bills that institutionalize anti-drug abuse councils in provinces, cities, municipalities, and barangays. Senate Bill, uh, uh, Senate Bill Number 1935, filed by Senate President Soto III. Senate Bill Number 1952, filed by yours truly, and House Bill Number 7812, filed by Representative Barbers and others. At this point, may I please uh, request the committee secretary to recognize the guest and the uh, resource person into this hearing. Thank you, sir. Good morning, sir. Morning. Uh, the following guests are present, sir. Representing the DILG is Yusek Rico Judge Javier Echeverri. Uh, representing the Department of Justice is State Counsel Charles Romulus Cambalisa. Uh, representing the Department of Budget and Management is uh, uh, Assistant Director Jane Abelia. Uh, uh, Miss Anto Najib Lira Virtudes, Joyce De La Cruz, and Mark James Evangelista. From the Department of uh, Health, sir, uh, represent the OH is represented by Dr. Jose Bienvenido Lebres. From the Department of Social Worker, Social Work. Welfare and Development is Mr. Garrett Paris. And uh, from the PDEA, sir, uh, they are represented by Mr. Patrick A. Madayag, Mr. Ren Javier, and uh, Attorney Michael Manjares. From the Civil Service Commission, uh, Civil Service is represented by Attorney Alma Foronda, and Attorney Cecil Joy Mijares. From the DDB, sir, uh, DDB is represented by Undersecretary Benjamin P. Reyes and Attorney Philip Yosef T. Vera Cruz. And from the Philippine National Police, sir, uh, PNP is represented by uh, uh, Chief PNP Devold Sinas, and I'll be mentioning the name, sir, but not necessarily according to seniority, sir. Major General Alfred Corpus, uh, Brigadier General Steve Lutan, Brigadier General Ronald Oli. Wala pa ba, sis? But may check dito. Wala pa. Okay. Uh, Brigadier General uh, Luisito Magnaye sir. and uh, Major General Marni C. Marcos, sir. Sir. Uh, uh, ano na? Major. 
and Brigadier General Ronald Oli. Morning, sir. From the National Bureau of Investigation, uh, it is represented by Attorney Ross Jonathan Galicia. And for the record, sir, we have also position papers given to us by the Department of Justice, the Dangerous Drug Board, and the Union of Local Authorities of the Philippines. Other agencies have already also been invited and uh, they will be coming in later, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Secretariat. Uh, I would like to greet the personally present Chief PNP, uh, General De Bolsinas, and uh, Major General Marnie Marcos, and uh, Major General uh, Alfred Corpus, Brigadier General Ronald Lee, the PDIG, uh, General Steve Ludan, the Crime Laboratory Director, and General Luisito Magnay, Health Service uh, Director, the PNP. Uh, thank you, Debold, for uh, bringing all your uh, pertinent staffs that can uh, share with us uh, your uh, inputs towards uh, crafting this uh, law, this bill. So maraming salamat for your presence. And uh, afterwards, uh, after uh, you have delivered your uh, your uh, peace, kung busy ka masyado, okay lang nga if you want to live. Dahil alam kong trabaho ng GPNP, masyadong busy. Anyway, iwan mo lang dito yung mga staff mo na kinakailangan naming uh, sumagot kung meron kami tatanong. Ha? No problem kung alis ka. Thank you for uh, for your presence. Uh, sir, thank you very much, sir. We are always uh, supporting all the hearings of the Senate, sir. Uh, I have cancelled all my uh, schedule, sir, to attend this hearing, sir. I will uh, go through and through, sir. Uh, we are always behind you, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Thank you, for coming over. Uh, I will give my opening statement. When our children make mistakes, do we immediately condemn them and call them hopeless? Definitely not. Being a father myself, I have long taught myself to extend my patience for as long and as far as I can, while at the same time making sure that my children learn their lesson and do better. It is clear then that the necessary approach to discipline must always be twofold. First, correction, and second, rehabilitation. Do we not stop with merely instilling a sense that what was done is wrong? Because we must also take steps to teach what is right. This is the same twofold principle that guides our practices in dealing with drug users. First, correction, and second, rehabilitation. This is also the same principle that is at work in the bills under consideration today. Noong ako ay chief PNP, mahigit isang milyong drug users ang sumuko noong ipinatupad namin ang war on drugs. Alinsunod na rin sa kagustuhan ni Pangulong Duterte na wakasan ang lumalalang suliranin sa droga ng ating bansa. Hindi may tatanggi na ang salot ng droga ay hindi lamang public order problem, kundi isa ring malaking public health problem. Hindi lang po ang pandemyang COVID-19 ang, kina ang kinakaharap natin sa kasalukuyan. Kinukonsidera rin ng United Nations Office on Drugs and Crimes na isang global problem ang drug abuse na kailangan nating tugunan. Katulad ng paglaban natin sa COVID-19, kakailanganin ang bawat membro ng komunidad para labanan ang illegal na droga. We need all the help we can get, ika nga. Mayroon din tayong mga nakalatag na mga suhistyon, mga konkretong hakbang 
sa patuloy nating pagsugpo sa illegal na droga. Pero para lalo nating mapabilis ang tagumpay sa gira na ito, may ilang mga bagay tayo na nais bigyang pansin at konsiderasyon First, there is a need for us to reduce bureaucracy in the process of admission for rehabilitation centers. Second, the insufficient number of rehabilitation centers in the country moves us to ask if the solution would perhaps lie in the establishment of drug abuse treatment and rehabilitation centers in every province and city. Furthermore, the persistence of the drug problem calls upon us to ensure that all sectors are involved in battling it from the province down to the barangay level. We aim to shed light on these issues in this committee hearing with urgency, considering that the United Nations Office of Drugs and Crime reported that around 269 million people used drugs worldwide in 2019, while over 35 million people suffer from drug abuse disorder. We need to fight this problem on all fronts with integrated health responses to supply and demand, community involvement on prevention and rehabilitation of drug users, continuous law enforcement operations, and the possible reimposition of the death penalty for big time drug traffickers. The proliferation of illegal drugs has destroyed families and contaminated the innocent lives of our communities. But rather than simply watching and allowing evil to unfold, we must lead, lead our families and communities to fight back, keeping in mind that the reigning principle is twofold. First, correction, and second, rehabilitation. Thank you and good morning. Before I proceed, I would like to recognize the virtual presence of uh, Attorney Gilbert T. Espinosa, Executive Director of the, the Department of Finance, Police Colonel Jima C. Vinluan, the PNP, Police Brigadier General Sermonia, PNP, who is online, and uh, representing DSWD, Director Helen Susara, also online. At this point, uh, may we hear an opening statement from Senator Amy Marcos, ma'am, if you have any? Senator Marcos, ma'am? Ah, okay, okay. Baka nasa kabilang hearing si Ma'am Amy. But anyway, <clears throat> para maging matuwasay ang ating pagdinig sa araw na ito, sundin natin ang pagkasunod-sunod ng mga topics ng bills for discussion. Part 1 ay yung drug rehabilitation bills. Number one is SBN 242 by President, uh, Senate President Soto III and Senator De Lima. Number two is SBN 1099 by Senator Cynthia Villar. And part two is the Anti-Drug Abuse Council's bills. One is SBN 1935 by Senate Senate President uh, Vicente Soto III and SBN 1952 by your strolly. It's been seven, it's be seven eight one two received by the Senate on December 3, authored by Senator Barbers and uh, others. <clears throat> Also, we would like to recognize the presence, virtual presence of Mr. Renanti Javier of PDEA. So, 
from here, uh, we would like to hear from uh, our resource persons. So, and dito ngayon, physically present si Chief PNP, uh, General Debold Sinas. You want to deliver your uh, opening statement? Thank you, uh, Honorable Senator, sir. First, I'd like to thank for inviting us to discuss the and present our positions on the following Senate Bill. Senate Bill Number 242, entitled An Act Streamlining the Process for the Admission of Drug Dependents in the Government Rehabilitation Facilities, amending for the purpose Section 3, 54, 77, 81, otherwise known as the Comprehensive Dangerous Drug Act of 2002, the Senate Bill Number 1099, entitled the Act Strengthening the Government Efforts Toward the Treatment and Rehabilitation of Drug Dependents or People Who Use Drugs by Establishing Drug Abuse Treatment and Rehabilitation Center in every police seat and city in, and con in the country, appropriating funds thereafter and for other purposes. Senate Bill Number 1935 and 1952 entitled An Act Institutionalizing Anti-Drug Abuse Council in the Province, Cities, Municipalities, and Barangays and appro appropriating funds therefore and other purposes, including Senate Bill nine, Number 399, 462, 513, and 658. The PMP expresses its support to the swift passage of the foregoing legislative measures Aim at strengthening the government capabilities in the rehabilitation and integration of individuals who use, abuse, or are addicted to the dangerous drugs. The declaration of the president to read the Philippines of drug, dangerous drugs revealed the true nature and extent of the problem visiting the country. Thousands of individuals openly admitted to be being addicted to the dangerous drugs and volunteered to participate in various community-based treatment and rehabilitation programs. Admittedly, these programs required a medical-based approach to ensure their effectiveness and, more importantly, prevent the lapse of the participants. Further, pursuant to the provisions of Republic Act Number 9165, the voluntary submission of a drug dependent to confinement, treatment, and rehabilitation in government or accredited rehabilitation centers at present requires the intervention of the court. The long and adverse nature of the application negatively impacts the desire of individuals who prefer immediate and anonymous treatment at these facilities. In, if enacted, these measures will streamline the procedures in the treatment of drug dependence and allow for faster administration of the needed intervention. Moreover, by institutionalizing the Anti-Drug Abuse Council nationwide, the local government units will be given a appropriate imprimatur to sustain the program of the government in addressing the menace of dangerous drugs. The PNP, being one of the law enforcement agencies bearing the blunt of the campaign against dangerous drugs, welcomes the expanded involvement of LGUs and allied agencies to provide a comprehensive and holistic approach can come up with a long-term solutions to the perennial problem. Personally, sir, would like also to consider by the Honorable Senator if the PNP caught using illegal drugs during random drug tests be mandatorily directed to join rehabilitation center. As of now, once our personnel is caught using dangerous drugs, we have just dismissed them and no intervention for sir. So there's a, a tendency that they might continue after they are dismissed from the police service. Thank you very much, sir, for uh, seeking the position of the PNP on these important legislative matters. Rest assured of our continued support on matters of mutual concern. Maraming salamat po at mabuhay po tayong lahat, sir. Thank you, uh, General Sinas. For... Yes, ma'am. Hi, Mr. Chair. See, I'm Ipo. Yes, ma'am. Uh, go ahead, ma'am. Uh, you have the floor. Yes, uh, I'm sorry. I uh, I was uh, I was uh, sponsoring a bill in the other meeting, but I would just like to extend my support to all these bills and the other uh, drug um, 
anti-drug uh, efforts. And uh, I just wanted to clarify as a, pre as a former LGU, uh, the details, kasi napakarami pong bill na pending sa ating chair. Eh, dapat maliwanag lang na hindi overlapping yung functions ng drug rehab center sa bahay pag-asa kasi marami-rami rin ang mga naitatag. So, dapat na medyo klaro. At uh, yung more proactive role ng DOH, DSWD, NGOs, uh, kailangan siguro ilatag natin ng uh, maiki. At the same time, uh, requesting from everyone a status. Ilan na ba talaga yung mga drug rehab centers na operational. Kasi hindi namin, for example, sa Ilocos Norte, we couldn't make it operational. At wala kaming trained personal. Wala kaming health workers or doktor na talagang sapat ang training. So that was my concern about uh, this uh, bill about drug rehab. And just very quickly, doon naman sa ADAC, siguro kinakailangan na iklaro rin natin yung... Uh, number of officials para maiwasan yung uh, pagiging uh, politicized, lalo na sa 2022. Alam naman natin, malapit-lapit na rin yung eleksyon. And also, uh, the uh, clear-cut compensation, kasi kung minsan eh, talagang uh, umaasa na rin ang mobilization fund yung iba para sigurado na uh, makapagkilo uh, sila. And of course, right now with COVID, we know that uh, the anti-drug abuse councils should be safeguarded and provided with health protocols. Yan lang po. And uh, I'm hopeful that uh, these concerns be addressed in the process of the hearing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Ma'am uh, Senator Aimee, for uh, your inputs. Uh, everything is uh, uh, recorded and uh, we will consider that at the committee level. And uh, for your information, ma'am, uh, we have read also the position papers submitted uh, by the different stakeholders, uh, lahat ng agencies na involved dito, and we have taken note, and uh, some of your comments also were part of uh, their uh, inputs. So we will consider everything, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, because there were questions that arose sa mga LGU kung makakover daw ng life insurance, medical assistance benefit, yung mga members ng ADAC. So, uh, uh, with that, uh, I thank you and we listen to our resource persons. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Good morning, Paul. So, uh, I would like to spread into the records na yung uh, ating mga yung sinabit ninyo ng mga position papers were already being studied by our secretariat and uh, except itong uh, kakapasok lang na latest na uh, position paper coming from the DOJ, uh, i-input natin ito ngayon. ULAP. Also, we have the position paper of the ULAP and the uh, than the Dangerous Dogs Board. So, uh, we would like to hear from our resource uh, persons. Uh, we'd like to hear from uh, DILG, uh, Yusik uh, Rico Echeberry. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Good morning have the floor. to all. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Good morning to uh, Senator Bato, the chairman of uh, the Dangerous Drugs and Public Order, together with Senator Ivy Marcos and Senator Bongo. <clears throat> this level lauds the objective of the herein proposed legislative measure, which recognizes the need to revitalize our current drug policies as it seeks to promote the country's anti-drug campaign by focusing on the increasing number of drug rehabilitation centers and facilities as well as restructuring the process on how drug dependents may be admitted to government drug rehabilitation facilities. The subject measure presents an alternative approach on how to prevent and treat drug abuse addiction, which can lead to rehabilitation. Highlight that drug addiction is an illness or disease which makes it more of a public health issue than a criminal justice issue alone. Accordingly, this level supports the objective of the subject Senate bill which is to establish Department of Health administered drug rehabilitation centers and facilities in every province and highly urbanized city in the country 
that would provide the holistic care that drug dependents severely need, further taking into account the stigma that drug, drug substance abuse and crime go hand in hand. Treating drug addiction provides a solution to curb criminal behavior, as this will improve the well-being and social function of people with addiction disorder. Likewise, this level supports the intention to create a rehabilitation center for juvenile rugby users in order to save the youth who are going through various kinds of struggles by introducing healthy alternatives and by teaching them coping strategies necessary for them to reclaim a healthy and productive life free from any kind of addiction. However, as to the provision regarding imprisonment of parents of juvenile rugby users who are deemed neglected upon the intervention of the DSWD, this level recommends that it shall be clarified whether both parents would be imprisoned. In that regard, if both parents are to be imprisoned, who will be left to rear their child? Moreover, while it is true that the establishment of those, these centers or facilities may be costly, however, the benefit that it will provide will greatly outweigh such financial expenses. Simply put, the economic value of largely, if not completely, offset the expenditures for construction and treatment considering that our safety and security must never be compromised and nothing is more important than protecting human lives and saving humanity. Correspondingly, this level supports and lobbies the institutionalization of the Anti-Drug Abuse Council in all provinces, cities, municipalities, and barangays all throughout the country, which will enable the LGUs to further continue the campaign against illegal drugs by granting them duties and responsibilities that will strengthen and ensure functionality of their respective ADAC. Last 2016, there were 1.8 million voluntary surrenderies, a phenomenon that happened only during the Duterte administration. The Davao experience, success of an active... Now, Senator Bato and uh, Wilkins Villanueva Pidea paved the way to the eradication of illegal drugs on the streets of Davao City. This good experience we want to institutionalize in all local government. The success of the fight against illegal drugs is the participation of the three, part the three partners of uh, local, uh, local agencies, meaning the local government, the police, and PIDEA. Without the participation of the three, the ADAC will not be successful. As a matter of fact, this department has been lobbying for this passage of law that seeks to create and institutionalize anti-drug abuse council in all provinces, cities, and municipalities and barangays nationwide and has drafted a bill through myself, through yours truly, which essentially contains the same provisions stated under the sub subject Senate bill because we wanted, Mr. Chair, that this good experience will be replicated even after the term of President Duterte and the next administration will benefit from this system because, Mr. Chair, when we filed cases against local governments in the Ombudsman, they found out that there is no legal basis at all because the ADAC bill is just an executive order or it's, it's just a memorandum circular from the ILG. By this institutionalizing it into a law, there could be a penal clause that could, that could give a chilling effect to all local governments who will not make their ADAC not just organized but functional. When you say functional, Mr. Chair, there should be community-based drug rehab, rehabilitating the 1.8 million surrenderings. There should be advocacy. There should be more into drug clearing operations together with PDEA. This is accountable. This, these activities will be inaccountable. This will be deliverables by the local government units together with the Philippine National Police. We want them to be more active. That's why, Mr. Chair, we are pushing for this and hopefully at least uh, two or three percent, or more, more so, five percent, uh, a budget that should be given at least to to the anti drug abuse council. If if barangay protection for children is one percent, if the five percent was given to God, why can't we also give for anti drug abuse council? Because majority of the inmates in the BJMP, sixty percent of them are drug related. If we could resolve the drugs in our country. I'm sure 60% of our jails will be cleared of, of drug-related cases. Mr. Chair, this is the priority of the president, and we want this to be institutionalized. And this will be the legacy of the Duterte administration, not just our administration, 
this will be benefited by all and the next generations to come. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Yusik uh, RJ Chiveri, for that very solid support for these uh, bills. Thank you very much. Uh, alam ko, right from the start, your advocacy is uh, really anti-drugs. Uh, thank you again. And please uh, stand by and uh, maintain your connectivity. Dahil marami kami questions na ibibigay sa iyo mamaya. Stand by ka lang dyan. Thank you, ha? Thank you very much. Uh, by the way, I would like to acknowledge the online presence of uh, our dear Senator, uh, Senator Bongo. Uh, do you have uh, your opening statement, uh, Pre? Yes. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. You have the floor. You have the floor. Yes, yes uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, salamat, uh, Mr. Chair. Si mo ngayon, ha? Kuta, kuta na pre, kuta. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, to my uh, fellow uh, senators here, our uh, resource uh, uh, persons and everyone in attendance, uh, thank you for allowing me to make a short uh, manifestation. Addressing the problem on uh, dangerous drugs has always been a priority of the president. Indeed, uh, the effects of the use and abuse of dangerous drugs on individuals and their families uh, cannot be overstated. Uh, it destroys uh, lives. It destroys families and destroys entire communities. Pag meron pong naging biktima ng droga sa pamilya, maniwala kayo sa hindi, talagang sira na yung pamilya. Iwan mo yung pitaka mo dyan sa bahay mo na nakawin na bukas yung laman pag meron pong adik sa pamilya. Apektado yeah, talaga ang buong pamilya. We have uh, already enacted laws uh, directed towards uh, 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 subduing the, sub, uh, the the criminals responsible for uh, uh, drug related crimes uh, however the eliminations of the elimination of drug related crimes is merely one aspect of the two uh, wrong uh, appro approach that must be taken in dealing with the effects of dangerous drugs apart from the fight for the nation's safety and security against the menace of illegal drugs, attention must also be directed towards the rehabilitation and recovery of uh, its victims. Drug dependents are victims of drugs, criminals, and syndicates. They are also they are people who have uh, been uh, uh, preyed upon uh, by uh, opportunists uh, seeking to take advantage of the downward uh, spiral that uh, uh, that uh, takes place once drug addiction begins. Thus, drug dependents uh, should be treated as victims in dire need of medical, psychological, and spiritual uh, help with a chance of being successfully reintegrated into society as health and productive citizens. Uh, pwede naman po natin sila bigyan pa po ng uh, panibagong uh, buhay at uh, kung sino po yung gustong magbagong buhay. As we continue to intensify our campaign against corruption, criminality, and illegal drugs, efforts to protect the welfare of the victims are also equally prioritized. This is uh, in fulfillment of our president's uh, promise of tapang and uh, malasakit. In the past years, President uh, Duterte inaugurated drug rehabilitation centers like the one in Bukidnon, Ito po yung uh, pinuntahan rin po ni, namin ni Pangulo with the Senator, uh, our Majority Floor Leader, uh, Senator Subiri. Sila po ang nag-identify po ng uh, lugar. Sila po yung nag-donate ng lugar doon sa bukid noon. And another one in uh, Nueva Ecija. And also through the initiative of Senator Cynthia Villar, we also established a drug rehab center in uh, Las Piñas. Today, we have 64 DOH accredited uh, drug rehabilitation centers through through these uh, measures we can now uh, intensify our efforts in helping our fellow filipinos take back their lives from the dark grip of dangerous drugs and the menace it creates it is uh, in this regard that i commend my colleagues uh, here in pushing for these uh, measures kapag uh, magtutulungan ng executive at uh, kongreso, may marami, mas marami po ang magagawa natin 
at mas malayo po ang ating mararating. At uh, uh, now, Mr. Chair, uh, uh, and my colleagues here, uh, if you would uh, uh, indulge me by allowing a few questions to our resource uh, uh, persons here in, uh, in attendance. Go ahead, go ahead, please. Go ahead. Uh, so Still have the floor. So DOH, po, uh, based on our data, how many drug dependents do we have in the country? What are the current op options for treatment and rehabilitation? Uh, napapansin ko po sa ngayon, parang uh, marami bang uh, nag-a-avail po ng ating uh, mga drug rehab uh, centers? Ano ba ang ating uh, data dito? Nakakatulong po ba ang ating mga drug rehab uh, centers para mabawasan po ang ating mga uh, uh, drug uh, dependence, no? At ano po ba ang pinakahuling data ko? Ilan po ba ang uh, uh, drug, uh, reported uh, drug uh, addicts all over the country? Yung sinasabi po ng Thank you, thank you. Please continue, uh, Senator Bongo. Uh, you know, po, I'm addressing my uh, question to uh, uh, the DOH or uh, sa ating uh, 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 DALG po. Yes, uh, DOH, uh, can you respond? And dito si Dr. Huh? Ito si Dr. Uh, yung paborito kong taga-DOH, si Dr. Jose Benvenido Liebres. Uh, go ahead, Doc. Uh, please respond to the question of Senator Bongo. Hey, uh, good morning, Honorable Chair. Good morning, Your Honors. Uh, thank you very much, po, for recognizing the Department of Health. And uh, I would like to respond po sa mga questions of the Honorable Senator Bongo. Actually, sir, uh, we were estimating at around more than 4 million on 2016 ang ating mga drug users. But because of the campaign of the government, it has a massive drop uh, amounting to more than roughly 1.6, 1.7 million um, drug users that are presently in the based on the most recent study of the Dangerous Drugs Board for 2019. I think the DDB would be able to provide more information with regards to that, Mr. Chair and uh, Honorable Senator Go. Now, as for the rehabilitation centers, Mr. Chair, uh, we have 61 all over the country, uh, both government and private. However, as a government, po, sa DOH, we have uh, 21 rehabilitation centers in almost all the regions except for um, Mimaropa and also on Barm. So, yun na lang po yung dalawang regions natin na walang rehabilitation centers. We do not wish to maintain many rehabilitation centers, Mr. Chair, because we, we are based on our studies, only 1 to 2 percent of our drug users become severe enough that we'll need um, re confined rehabilitation centers or our residential rehabilitation centers. Mas kailangan po natin ang mga rehabilitation centers natin na tinatawag na outpatient rehab centers which we believe would be accessible siguro on a provincial level and community-based rehabilitation programs on our municipalities and even all the way down to the barangays. We believe also, Mr. Chair, that the LGUs, if they are capable, would also put up their rehabilitation centers. We have many different models that are available. So, uh, lawak-lawak na po ang nagprogreso natin. Ano po? Um, during the start of the Duterte administration, we only had 13 rehabilitation centers. 
in a span of four years, five years, naging 21 na po sila. And to mention uh, the, the others that are that we have are the ones in Mega Rehabilitation Center in Nueva Ecija. We have, of course, yung nabanggit na po ni Senator Go, yung ating nasa bukid noon, and then yung isa rin po okay, na um, pinulungan po ni ating, ating mahal na Senadora, Cynthia Villar, sa Las Piñas, among many others. Uh, idagdag ko na rin po, no? um, ang Ilocos region, meron po tayong dalawang rehabilitation centers. Kasi I think this is a concern of our honorable Senator, Ma'am Aimee Marcos. We have one already in Dagupan. And we have one that was supposed to open 2020, yung ating San Fernando La Union Rehab. Kaya lang po, hindi natuloy yung opening because of COVID-19. So all in all, Mr. Chair, all in all your honors, ang gusto po natin maka-establish ng isang buong network of services that will handle all the different levels of uh, substance use from the mild users, which will be catered by our um, uh, community-based rehabilitation centers. The moderate users, which will be catered po by the uh, outpatient rehabs, and then the severe users, which will be catered by the um, our residential rehab. And Mr. Chair, madagdag ko na rin po, no? this has all to be controlled in the cent uh, within the central office of the Department of Health. So if you can remember po our Senate Bill 513, which was authored by the Honorable Chair, na mag-establish din po tayo ng Bureau sa Department of Health, for abuse and prevent abuse bureau of drug abuse prevention and control para po meron tayong isang network of services that is parallel to the universal health care and the appropriate networks po all over the country thank you very much mr chair um thank you very much senator Go. Mr. Mr. Chair, Mr. thank you thank you dr yeah. lebres Be before i recognize again uh, senator bongo i just would like to uh, clarify from DOH. If you sinasabi mo na existing 23 drug rehabilitation centers, are they all uh, residential drug rehabilitation centers? Yung, yung residential ba ito lahat? Correct, yung, Mr. Chair. 21 Ah, Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank yes, you. Mr. Chair. 21 rehabilitation centers, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Yeah, uh, go, uh, yeah. go ahead, Senator Bongo. Uh, Mr. No, Mr. Chair. Chair. Uh, uh, later, uh, you say Kichiberi, we, we have to recognize first the Senator Bongo. Go ahead, Senator Bongo. Mr. Chair, napapansin ko lang, ano, uh, gusto po natin bigyan ng pagkakataon na itong mga drug dependents, mga drug addicts na magbagong buhay through uh, rehab uh, centers. Napapansin ko lang po sa mga ibang lugar na uh, tinatanong namin, may mga naging biktima talaga ng uh, uh, drogang ito kaya lang malalayo ang kanilang mga uh, rehab uh, centers halimbawa kung nasa uh, isang rehiyon ka nasa isang rehiyon pa na minsan po yung nadi-discourage po yung uh, magbiyahe at uh, saan ba yung rehab centers na ito pero napansin ko rin po itong rehab center natin sa Nueva Ecija Nung binuksan at uh, hanggang ngayon, parang sa tingin ko po, uh, bumaba yata yung uh, numero ng nagpapa-rehab. Uh, Kaya siguro, pag-aralan natin ng uh, mabuti, bakit po ay hindi ganun kadami yung gustong mag-avail po ng, ng mga rehab uh, centers natin sa, sa ngayon. At lalo-lalo na po yung sa... Yung sa unang panahon po ng Duterte administration ay uh, napansin ko maraming gustong magparehab nun uh, dahil uh, kadalasan ay uh, takot silang maybe uh, mamatay dahil uh, talagang panahon ngayon, GPNP ngayon talagang tinutuluyan sila. Hindi ko na maalala sino ba yung GPNP nung kakaupo ni ni Pangulo talagang uh, uh, yung kampanya laban sa droga ay talagang napaka uh, seryoso nun at uh, takot na takot yung mga uh, drug addict kaya maraming gusto magparehab. Ngayon medyo bumababa. Maybe siguro nababawasan na yung mga uh, drug addict or uh, ang problema rito may mga rehab centers tayo ang uh, problema how to convince itong mga drug dependents to, to avail 
of this uh, rehab uh, center. Salamat, uh, Mr. Chair. Malala niyo pa ba sino yung CPN team ng panahon? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mr. Chair. Ayaw, alam niyo, alam, alam niyo, si Senator Bongo, bakit uh, masyadong master niya itong problema sa droga? Kasi kung ano yung experience ni President Duterte in uh, fighting drug problem, yun din ang experience ni Senator Bongo. Pero mas malalim pa yung yung experience ni Senator Bongo dahil uh, siya pa rin nangangalaga eh, after fighting the problem siya pa rin nangangalaga sa mga biktima ng mga drug crazed uh, suspects siya pa rin nangangalaga sa pamilya ng mga mga mga, mga drug uh, dependents so mas malalim talaga yung kanyang nalalaman about the drug problem of this country Mr. Kaya, Chair, thank you yeah. very much, Senator Bongo. I I am diverting your question to another point so that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. anyway, thank Chair. you, thank you, Mas. Uh, yeah. Can we Mr. recognize uh, Senator uh, Yusik Ichiberi, please? Yes. Just to also answer with with what Senator Bongo has been asking uh, on the part of the DILG, sir. Um, since we are in charge of monitoring our local governments, most especially the barangays, since health was been devolved to the local government. Um, out of the 1.8 million voluntary surrenderers, based on our records, there were 500,000 of them who have committed in undergoing community-based drug rehab in the barangays. So it's a combination between barangays and the police because the police also had their own community-based drug rehab. Um, we actually, Mr. Chair, went ahead by also giving awards to local governments who are outstanding in community-based drug rehab. And even Dangerous Drugs Board right now created a policy for, and with DOH and DILG, created this DDB number four policy of community-based drug rehab. Paano yung magandang sistema para ma-institutionalize na? That's what we are trying to monitor under the Anti-Drug Abuse Council. Kaya nga po kailangan palakasin palatin lalo yung community-based drug rehab. But as the head of the .RC, Mr. Chair, pursuant to the executive order of the president, uh, DILG being the chair of the .RC, ang napansin po namin, yung unang salvo natin ng kampanya sa paglalagay ng uh, rehab center, it's it's laudable, Mr. Chair. Pinilit natin by provinces. Pero what we notice, Mr. Chair, that pinilit natin by provinces or even by region, uh, ang nangyari po, uh, sa, sa kagustuhan natin malagyan halos lahat ng sulok ng Pilipinas, na, ang nak nakita po namin, obserbahan po namin sa .RC, Y yung mga highly affected areas, parang may kasi nga pinilit natin maglagay sa mga report areas. What, what, did I mean, what, did I, uh, what do I mean about this, Mr. Chair? Metro Manila per se has the dra highest drug affectation. Second to Metro Manila is Region 3, 4A and right, Region 7. Kung titignan nyo po, kung, isasa, kung titignan nyo yung quadrant, no, ng quadrant ng Metro Manila, mataas pa rin ang drug affectation at nagkukulang na rin po ang admitan sa mga sa mga ospital natin na severe. Why? Because kung susundan po natin yung sa Philippine National Police na four quadrants, yung metro, yung yung yung, poli, yung National Police uh, District East, West, South, ang butas po tayo sa Police District North. Ano yung North? Ito yung Kalmana, Kamanaba area. Kaya nga po, si Mayor Joy Belmonte at Mayor, Mayor Isko Moreno nagre-reklamo sa amin, sa amin po na punong-puno na rin ng ibang mga taga-kaluokan doon sa, sa rehabilitation ng Manila at rehabilitation ng Quezon City. Pero ang kaluokan, being second to the largest in Metro Manila, eh, walang rehabilitation. What, what, what am I saying, Mr. Chair? Siguro, what, what we should do as a strategy now is to make a strategic study kung saan ba yung mas mataas ang affectation at tingnan ano ba dapat ang kailangan bigyan pa ng konting pansin. Uh, although laudable yung paglalagay sa mga probinsya para ma-maximize natin ang resources dahil hindi naman humarami ang pera natin rin sa, sa, sa mga suporta ng gagaling sa ibang bansa rin that we have to be intelligent enough to, to put the rehabilitation center where it is most needed. So, so one of our resolution, Mr. Chair, na ibinigay na po namin at uh, we passed is to create one for Kalmana and hopefully study for Regions 3 and 4A kung kakailanganin pa ho. So the, that is now the, 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 the forward-looking uh, proposal of the .RC program, Mr. Chair. Para sa ganun, ma-maximize natin yung resources natin and we can put where it is most needed. 
but uh, I, I also support what Senator Bongo is saying. We still also have to put uh, rehabilitations in the provinces para accessible pa rin po sa iba. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, DDB, Mr. Chair. Go, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Yusik Isiberi. So go ahead, Yusik uh, Benjamin Reyes. Uh, thank you. Good. Thank you, uh, Honorable Chairman. Good morning, sir. And uh, good morning, uh, uh, Sir Bong and uh, Ma'am Aimi. Uh, also to address the question of uh, Sir Bong, no? Tama yung observation ni Sir Bong na yung sa rehab center talagang mas kokonti yung nag avail sir no because uh, uh, based on the world drug report uh, 2018 sir only 0.7 percent ang uh, masasabi nating severe use disorder so napakaliit nun sir just to give you an idea uh, Mr. Chair uh, right now we have aside from the government treatment and rehab centers na nabanggit kanina ni Dr. Bien we also have private rehab uh, centers, a total of 61 accredited treatment rehab centers, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, and then we also have eight outpatient uh, treatment and rehab centers. But what's more important, Mr. Chair, sabi ni Yusek RJ Echeberry kanina, we already uh, uh, provided uh, services to the surrenderers, no? 690,092 surrenderers as of October uh, 2020. No? And uh, uh, 772 LGUs already providing community-based services. So I agree, Mr. Chair, and this also addresses the uh, the observation earlier of Ma'am Aimee. Uh, magastos po kasi talagang magpatakbo ng isang treatment and rehab center. I agree with the suggestion. Uh, highly urbanized areas na lang, uh, Mr. Chair, ang uh, titignan natin. And then strengthen natin ang community-based uh, programs. Anyway, majority, Mr. Chair, 90 to 95 percent ng mga uh, users natin mapupunta talaga sa community-based program. Uh, that's all, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, uh, you, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, I just would like, I, I just would like to uh, go back to DOH. Uh, in line with the, in line with the statement of the uh, DDB, you say, uh, Reyes. DOH, uh, yung sinasabi mo kanina na ilan yun? Ilan yung uh, 23 ba yun? Na rehab centers established by DOH? So, 21, sir, na govern DOH rehab facilities. How many? How yes, many? 31? 21 rehab centers all over the country. Dalawang puti sa, Mr. Chair. Dalawang puti sa. Okay. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, what, what, is, what is your observation? Uh, basing on the statement of uh, DDB. Anong tingin mo? Uh, okay. Do we need to uh -oh. de-operationalize some of this uh, 31 or continue operating? Do we need them to continue operating? Mr. Or? Chair, fine. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Chair, together with the DDB and also with the DILG, we established a certain, what we call a uh, client flow for wellness. It's like an algorithm, Mr. Chair, na kung saan natin ipapadala yung mga um, mild users all the way hanggang severe users. So based on that studies, Mr. Chair, no, um, recommendation namin is one rehab center per region and also with uh, for the um, highly urbanized that uh, highly urbanized cities. So, pareho po kami ng directions. But however, Mr. Chair, isang network po ng services ang gusto po namin, ang nire-recommenda po namin. Magkaroon tayo ng outpatient sa bawat probinsya na kung saan po yung mga, ano, pwede silang, ito na po ang mag-establish ng network kung saan maari po nating dalhin ang isang pasyente o i-direct ang isang pasyente sa iba-ibang uri ng programa. Likewise, Mr. Chair, ang binanggit kanina ng DILG and DDB on community-based rehabilitation programs wherein 690,000 ang natulungan na. That's very correct, Mr. Chair. That's part of the network of services, Mr. Chair. So kung babalikan po natin, ang irerekomenda po ng Department of Health is a network of services ranging from a community-based program to an outpatient program all the way until, up to a rehabilitation program. And Mr. Chair, uh, siguro if I may add some statistical information, ano po, comparing our 
inpatient rehabilitation centers uh, all the way from 2016 all the way to 2019. I also have stats for 2020 pero mahirap isama si 2020 because of COVID. Noong 2016 po, nagsisimula pa lang ang ating kampanya laban sa droga, 3,700 ang ating inpatients. All throughout the years, tumaas po ang ating inpatient sa 4,500 ang ating admissions. Bumagsak lang po noong 2020 dahil nga po sa COVID. But all in all, na-utilize naman po sila. So it is important po na continuously na meron tayo, pero wag po nating sobrahan ang locations. Yun pong sinabi, binabanggit ni uh, Undersecretary Echeverry sa Kamanawa, it is a very good candidate po na lagyan ng rehabilitation dahil mataas pong affectation. So in the end, Mr. Chair, siguro ang, ang namin recommendations namin is for, <coughs> is for both DOH together with other agencies such as the DDB to identify the type and location of service of the different types of rehabilitation centers and rehabilitation programs to develop the staffing pattern and the training po associated with the rehabilitation centers and the promulgation of guidelines for the staffing of the OH rehabilitation centers. So based on that, Mr. Chair, ang recommend namin is a network of services um, na nag-range from community-based all the way po hanggang sa residential. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank, thank you for that comment, uh, Dr. Libris. Uh, so. From your comments, I uh, was able to surmise na wala tayong, uh, wala tayong disagreement dito yung uh, proposal natin na one inpatient uh, drug rehabilitation center per region. So okay tayo dyan. Wala tayong problema. So dito na lang tayo ngayon mag-concentrate uh, mag, uh, yung sa uh, community-based drug rehabilitation program sa baba kung paano natin ito gagawin. So, maraming salamat, uh, Dok. Uh, before that, uh, before continuing on, I would like to acknowledge the online presence of Dr. Eden Chua Pineda, National President, Liga ng Mga Barangay. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for attending dahil uh, kailangan, kailangan namin yung opinion ngayon ng barangay regarding the establishment of BADACs. So, from here, kung... Uh, Meron pa bang gusto magbigay ng opening statement from our uh, from our resource persons? Pakicheck kasi limitado lang yung nakikita natin sa screen. Yung ibang online hindi natin nakikita. Baka merong nagtataas ng kamay. Wala na? Wala? So, uh, there being none... Uh, meron? Meron nagsasound off? Mr. Chair, Department of Health po. A Department of Health, uh, you, you want to say something? Yes, Mr. Chair. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Say, Chair, may I, if I may, Mr. Chair, on Dr. Bien Liabras po, ilay, Mr. Chair? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. You have the floor. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, this, this is the, yes, Mr. Chair, thank you very much. This is uh, with regards, to, again, to Senate Bill Number 242. Uh, we would like to make a statement on that, Mr. Chair, if we may. Um, the Department of Health acknowledges the intention of Senate Bill 242 to streamline the process of admission of drug dependents. We support the passage of the proposed measure into law, Mr. Chair. However, we have some recommendations for the Honorable Committee. First, Mr. Chair, on the Section 64, is that uh, on, we allow just one DOH-accredited physician to determine the treatment and rehabilitation of drug dependents and recommitment to treatment and subsequent cases to enable an evidence-based approach. Two, Mr. Chair, we recommend to minimize the barriers that limit the vo voluntary submission of drug dependents to proper treatment and rehabilitation to increase access to appropriate services. And three, Mr. Chair, to use the definition of drug dependency examination as reflected in the Dangerous Drugs Board Regulation Number no. 7, Series of 2019, and it reads as follows. Drug dependency examination is a medical examination conducted by a DOH accredited physician to evaluate the extent of drug abuse of a person and to determine whether he or she is a drug dependent or not, which includes medical history taking, interview, determination of criteria for drug dependency, mental and physical status, medical and psychiatric complications, and comorbidities, 
and the detection of dangerous drugs in body specimens through laboratory procedures. It contains an assessment of the extent of drug dependency med medical complications and presence of comorbidities and recommend appropriate interventions thereof. We respectfully submit, and if the Honorable Committee and the Honorable Chair would allow us, we shall submit our position paper after the committee hearing, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you, uh, Dr. Liabres. Uh, maraming salamat. Uh, pasensya ka na at uh, nagka-problema yung hin hindi kayo nagka-problema. Kami dito nagka-problema ng linya. Ayun na, okay na. Uh, Bumabalik na. Maraming salamat uh, for that. Uh, I would like also to recognize ASIC uh, Ronald Cardema of the National Youth Commission. Uh, welcome, ASIC uh, Ronald Cardema. Uh, you want to say something? You have the floor. If you want to give your opening statement, you have the floor. Uh, Go ahead. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, maraming salamat po. Uh, mula po sa National Youth Commission, kami ay nagpapasalamat sa ating mga senador, sa inyong mga panukalang batas po. Dahil uh, kami po, naniniwala kami na ngayong panahon na ito, panahon ni Pangulong Duterte, malakas ang ating laban sa illegal na droga. Mula sa hanay ng mga kabataan na binibiktima lagi ng droga, talaga nakikita namin, sir, yung uh, magandang uh, resulta mula sa ating administrasyon. Ngunit, baka kapag uh, nagpalit ng administrasyon, ayaw nating mawala yung ganitong kalakas na laban sa droga. So, nandito ang inyong mga panukalang batas na sana eh, maging uh, batas na po. Lalo na po yung patungkol dito sa... Ito ay sa mga ADAC, sir, yung uh, Anti-Drug uh, Abuse Councils ng kada LGU. Pati yung, ano, sir, uh, creating a rehab center for juvenile, juvenile rugby users, sir. Kasi yung mga kabataan, alam ninyo, sir, talaga minsan naaawa tayo bakit mayroong sa lansangan natin, sa Metro Manila, nakakakita pa tayo ng nag, uh, nagda-drugs, nagra-rugby na kabataan. Minsan, binababaan namin pag nakikita namin, hindi rin namin alam kung saan dadalin minsan pag kinausap namin yung uh, rugby boy. Pero pakiramdam namin at alam naman natin to, kung hindi sila maalagaan ng kanilang mga, mga magulang, meron tayong sinasabing uh, parents patrie. Ang kanilang uh, pinakamagulang ay ang estado, ang ating gobyerno, kaya dapat tayo makialam, sir. So nagpapasalamat tayo sa mga panukalang batas na ito at uh, full support po ang National Youth Commission. And kami po, nung ibinalik ang SK noong 2018 under the Duterte administration, ang unang ginawa po namin, nakipag-partner kami sa Dangerous Drugs Board para lahat ng youth leaders, SK leaders, ay oriented sa illegal drugs and uh, sa laban ng ating gobyerno. So kami po ay patuloy na sumusuporta sa laban ng ating national government sa illegal drugs. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Chair, at ating mga senador po. Thank you, uh, Asik Ronald Gardema, for that uh, statement. And uh, thank you for recognizing the fact that uh, we, re we really need to institutionalize everything before we are done and gone with this administration. So maraming salamat kaya ito binibilisan natin para kahit wala na tayo, andyan pa rin. Systems uh, will be in place. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to pose this question to uh, the DDB and DOH. Uh, uh, during the first hearing, it was uh, mentioned no? that the director of the center must be a physician. We find the same requirement here in the bill of Senator Villar, stating that the director must be a holder of a doc degree of doctor of medicine. Can DDB state for the record again its position on this uh, requirement? Uh, uh, what will, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, uh, DDB. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. As uh, we have verbalized in our previous uh, hearings, uh, Mr. Chair, under our board regulation, uh, anybody with behavioral uh, uh, background uh, uh, expertise uh, can be the, uh, the head of the uh, treatment and rehab facility. Considering that uh, majority of the functions of the head, uh, Mr. Chair, is administrative, no management in nature, uh, hindi naman po siya technical. No? So we maintain, uh, Mr. Chair, our position. Of course, we also agree with the Department of Health, uh, siguro sa government. Pag government, uh, under yan ang Department of Health, then naturally, 
the head uh, kagaya ng mga hospital is a physician. But uh, marami pong private rehab centers sa uh, Mr. Chair, uh, even uh, uh, in abroad, no? sa labas po ng ating bansa, uh, behavioral uh, management ang uh, expert, ang expertise po ng mga head ng rehab centers. Uh, that's all, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you po. Thank you, sir, for that uh, information. How about the DOH? Uh, is it non-negotiable that the director of the center must be a physician? Uh, what, what will be the benefits if the requirement for the director of the center is a physician? And uh, do you have enough doctors who want to specialize in rehabilitation of persons with drug problem? First, yung uh, non-negotiable ba talaga ito? Na talagang nakafix na tayo dito na doktor? Go ahead, DOH. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, we agree with the Dangerous Drugs Board that for private rehabilitation centers, we may allow non-doctors, non-physicians that uh, to head the, as director of the rehabilitation center, provided that they have training on the behavioral sciences. But Mr. Chair, we also agree with the Dangerous Drugs Board that for government rehabilitation centers, it must be a physician which has training on addiction medicine or psychiatry to handle it, not just any other specialist. Kailangan meron siyang background. The difference, Mr. Chair, is that in government rehab centers, we handle a very large group of patients, at least at the very least from 100 all the way up to 1,000. And the expertise of the physician would be very helpful, not just in the rehabilitation aspect, but not just in the administration aspect, but also in the process of rehabilitation. So we support uh, and concur with the Dangerous Drugs Board, Mr. Chair. Thank you. So thank you. Uh, so at least establish natin na pwede pala na hindi talaga physician. Basta meron lang yung, uh, ano sinasabi mo, sir, uh, DDB? Behavioral. behavioral. Yes, sir. Background in behavioral sciences, sir. Um, is that a course, uh, uh, DOH? May kurso bang ganyan? Psychology. Uh, I'm sure, Mr. Chair, it's a generic. Yeah. Psychology. Generic. Psychology. Uh, sociology. One. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Social uh, services. Uh, medicine. Yeah, kasi alam ko, uh, hindi naman talaga kailangan doktor ang magiging... Uh, like, for example, presidente ng isang malaking uh, hospital. Meron akong, bago lang ako nagaling dyan sa uh, Cardinal Santos uh, Hospital, dyan sa may San Juan. Eh, napakalaking hospital, pero yung kanilang presidente is not a physician, uh, accountant. So, basta may managerial skills ka, magaling ka. Uh, management lang naman ito. But uh, still, mas maganda na kung Doktor na, manager pa. Mas maganda yun. Malaking bagay yun. But anyway, to continue on, uh, back to the UH. Uh, another concern that was heard from the previous hearing was that the specific type of rehabilitation must be indicated in the establishment of these centers. The DOH stated that their aim is to establish one inpatient or residential drug treatment and rehab center per region and an outpatient drug treatment and rehab center per province. Do we know the reasons for this distinction? What is, why is there a need to specify these requirements? For the record, lang, um, DOH, please explain. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, the, uh, the reason for that, Mr. Chair, is the number of cases based on the percentage of cases based on the severity of drug use. So based on our studies, Mr. Chair, 94 to 95% have mild substance use disorders, which will only need community-based rehab program. Sa komunidad po yan, so we are establishing the CBDR. And then we have 4 to 5% of cases would be needing an outpatient program. Nakakauwi pa sila sa bahay. And finally, only 1 to 2% of cases are severe that would need residential rehabilitation program. So based on that, Mr. Chair, if we, if, if we compute that uh, more or less, 
hindi natin kailangan ng maraming rehabilitation centers na inpatient and one per region would be sufficient for the time being. And then uh, one outpatient per province, which is accessible, would be sufficient for our moderate cases and, of course, the community-based programs. So, yun po, Mr. Chair, ang rational namin on why we could recommend that. And to add on, Mr. Chair, siguro, we should also look into our highly urbanized cities for residential rehab. Siguro yun po ang na-miss out ng DOH in our last, uh, meet, in our last uh, committee hearing, Mr. Chair. Palagay ko, it would be feasible to add also the highly urbanized cities and the metros para sa isang residential inpatient. Maraming salamat, Mr. Chair. Yeah, thank you. Uh, particularly, Kamanaba area, as uh, stated by uh, Yusik Isiberi. So, I see the heads of uh, uh, DDB, DILG, PNP uh, nodding. So they are, we are in agreement with uh, your proposal. So thank you, po, uh, Doctor. May may merong naga uh, gusto magbat in? I hear somebody. Wala. So to continue. Uh, I, I stated in previous hearing that the rehabilitation centers managed by the religious sector are among the most successful. Uh, have we looked into their best practices? Are there any of them that uh, we can perhaps emulate in our government-operated uh, rehabilitation centers? Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair. Yes, go ahead. Um, um, one, one good example of which is uh, the Diocese of Caloocan with Bishop uh, David, who is a very uh, critical... <laughs> Uh, bishop uh, of the president. But, however, his uh, community-based drug rehab, Mr. Chair, uh, was successful enough to even elevate Kaloocan's uh, performance as well, uh, which is worthy of uh, praise. That's why we have given them an award through the Anti-Drug Abuse Council Awards for uh, church-based groups. No, not just Kaloocan, we also gave awards in Iloilo City and some parts in uh, in Mindanao as well to recognize the efforts of the church in this in this uh, uh, campaign in rehabilitating the community based drug rehab they went further mr chair hindi lang rehab they went further by reintegration also yun na nakakaligtaan natin mr chair it's not enough that we rehabilitate them we have to reintegrate them kaya kailangan pumasok yung livelihood programs ng TESDA kailangan pumasok yung DOLE for employment uh, kailangan pumasok rin ang Department of Agriculture. So this is one part of helping them to really not just be rehabilitated, but to be reintegrated. Because if reintegration cannot be included in the rehabilitation, hindi siya attractive sa mga addict. Because they also want to be, they want also to change. But if there are no means of helping them, babalik at babalik rin sila. So reintegration, which we saw as a program in Kaloocan Diocese, was fully implemented and uh, we we will uh, we are now in the process mr chair under ddb to to put some policy for the integration as well uh, ayan yung tesda dole deped for alternative learning system and of course the nyc will also be here to also assist us on that mr chair thank you thank you ayusi kichiberi alam nyo uh, we may have uh, failed to integrate that in our bills yung uh, the reintegration process hindi natin isama dito but uh, with, without that alam nyo yung mga LGUs ay gumagawa na niyan I have observed doon sa pag-ikot ko doon sa Jinsan meron tayo dito sa Bataan uh, dito sa Laguna uh, automatic yun uh, sa kanilang rehabilitation centers nandoon na yung learning uh, modules about paggawa ng hollow blocks Paano mga electrical, uh, lahat ng mga vocational courses, carpentry, inooper nila doon as part of their uh, rehabilitation program. Kaya ready na yung paglabas nila from the center, uh, the, the patient is no, is uh, already ready to face the world armed with the uh, necessary skills para mabuhay ng uh, matiwasay. Kaya maganda, maganda yung punto yan. At uh, 
I, I would like to commend the, the ALJ for your efforts in uh, recognizing and also the DDB, recognizing and awarding the LGOs and other uh, organization NGOs na involved dito sa program na ito, recognizing them for their uh, best, uh, good efforts. Alam nyo, nakaka-encourage yan, malaking bagay yan eh. Sa atin dito sa taas, at the national level, medyo hindi natin masyadong mapapansin yan. Pero doon sa lower level, lalo na barangay to barangay, maawardan mo yung barangay na yan na maganda yung performance ng kanilang badak or kanang uh, anti-drug campaign program. Eh magkakaroon na yan ng uh, magtitrickle, uh, meron ng domino effect yan sa ibang barangay. Kasi mag-aspire mag din yung ibang barangay na magkaka-award. So they will perform better. So maganda po yung ginagawa nyo. And I would like to uh, uh, commend uh, the ILG for that effort. Uh, thank Mr. you. Chair, Mr. Chair, oh, just to add, right, just right. To add on that, ito po yung programa lamang. We want to institutionalize the awarding system. Kasi pag hindi na tayo nakaupo o hindi na itong administration to, baka hindi na uli maulit. That's why we want this to be included in the bill of the Anti-Drug Abuse Council. Uh, this will be an award uh, to be given by the agencies, hindi lang o DILG to. It's uh, an agency effort between DDB, DILG, DOH, DSWD, PNP, PDA, NYC. Parang isahan po yan na ginawa po namin of monitoring, assessing, assessing them, auditing them, and then giving them awards. So tama po kayo. But again, my fear, Mr. Chair, this is just a program of the Duterte administration. We want it to be permanent and institutionalized. Thank you, sir. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, for that matter, uh, uh, Secretariat, please take note of those comments. And uh, also, Yusek Ichiberi, kung meron kang maibigay sa amin na uh, matulong tungkol dyan para pagtrabahuin uh, natin yung technical working uh, group natin, magbigay ka ng input about that uh, reward uh, processes or uh, criteria or what. Thank you, ha? Salamat. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may. Yeah, go, go ahead, uh, DDB. Uh, you say Reyes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Actually, the board recently approved a reintegration uh, model, uh, Mr. Chair, yung pong Yakap Bayan, uh, uh, spearheaded by uh, DSWD. And I see Director Helen uh, Susara nandito yata, Mr. Chair. Maybe she can elaborate, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, you say, uh, Helen Susara, are you around, yes. ma'am? Yes, sir. Please, good morning. Go, you good have morning. the floor. Good morning, Senator. Uh, for the on the part of the department, we do support the passage of the bill strengthening the ADAC. However, we are proposing the strengthening of the community community based network to address the concerns of the RP Woods, and also to include in the bill the aftercare and the integration program, wherein the department lead the Yakap Bayan program. At the moment, we already trained the LGUs, uh, around 191 LGUs were trained on how to respond to the concerns of the RP Woods. And this will continue for 2021. The training will continue on. And we are already ready with the modules and the case management tools for our social workers and frontline service workers. That's all. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Mr. Thank Chair you very much, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, Yusek Kelly Susara. Go ahead, uh, Yusek uh, uh, Ichiberi. Thank you very much. Just to add, Mr. Chair, isa po sa nakita po namin, no? although yes, uh, the SWD is the head of the reintegration, ang gusto po namin ma-integrate rin po yung ibang mga agencies who can really help in the reintegration also. Like for example, TESDA. Nung kinausap po namin ng TESDA, wala pang malinaw na pondo para sa, sa anti-illegal drugs. Kaya nga pinapasok namin yung Philippine Anti-Drug Strategy para ang bawat ahensya may nakalaan na pondo para sa mga, uh, uh, mga addicts for region. Another is DOLE. Paano ba pumapasok ang DOLE sa pagre-reintegrate? pagbibigay ng ng employment sa mga sa mga pwoods natin another is department of education pag walang upon assessment ang addict kailangan lang pala ng alternative learning system ay bigyan ho natin so mr chair kailangan talaga uh, uh, aside from dswd other agencies who can really be of help in the reintegration should be part of this program thank you very much mr chair tama thank you thank you uh, tama po yun uh, 
dapat lahat ng government agencies na involved in their integration should be mandated by this law to give their share uh, in this program. So take note, uh, Secretariat. Well, uh, to, con to continue, nandito bang NBI? NBI, please sound up. Uh, yeah, yes, Your Honor. Anjan, NBI? Uh, yes, um, Your Honor. I, I just would like to uh, get your cl uh, clarification from you. Kasi with regards to this bill, yung... Uh, itong bill na baka nakaligtaan natin dito itong uh, Attorney Galicia yung comment nila yung bill na uh, eventually would decriminalize uh, drug use uh, nasabi natin dito na pag nahuli yung isang drug user ay instead na ikulong uh, hindi na ikukulong uh, sila ay pupunta na sa drug rehabilitation center i-rehabilitate uh, ang comment ninyo is that uh, it will it will uh, encourage further drug use dahil nga hindi na criminalize baka dadami yung uh, drug user uh, can you elaborate on that, uh, NBI? I, yes, Your Honor. What we're trying to say, if it's the if the drug user is arrested for the second time, um, that will encourage more drug use. Uh, because uh, people, uh, those who are inclined to use drugs, will just say, ah, it's okay to use drugs because we're just going to be reha rehabilitated. Now, if it's only one time deal, we are, we believe there is a in giving people second chances. Uh, if it's only one time and that's okay, but if it's a second time and the third time, and these people will get away with drug use, then uh, there will not be scared to use drugs. Oh, thank you, thank you for that. Uh, anyway, you you. you, you, you Medyo mahina ang signal mo, uh, NBI? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Your Honor. Sige, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, continue. Yan, medyo, medyo narinig na kita. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, what we're trying to say, if it's only a, a first offender, that's okay. We, we believe that these drug users uh, deserves another chance. But if it's a second time and a third time offender, then these people will just think that it's okay to use drugs because they're just going to the hospital or to a rehab center or to the uh, barangay integration uh, program. This will not discourage people from using drugs or honor if they're just going to be uh, treated or they're going to be spoiled. Thank you, thank you, uh, Attorney Jonathan Galicia, for that input. Actually, uh, medyo na-awaken ako doon sa, uh, sa comment ninyo. And uh, I, I realize na that this particular provision of the bill should take uh, should be considered, should uh, uh, we should take a second look on this. Uh, anyway, uh, pag-aaralan pa namin ito, pag-aaralan natin ito para lalong gaganda. Uh, thank you for that comment. Thank you for that comment. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Pwede na siguro tayong uh, uh, lumipat sa next part, yung part 2 natin, yung Anti-Drug Abuse Councils. Uh, yun ay itatakil natin ngayon. I would like to ask the ALJ, how many barangays have been cleared as drug-free to date? What are the guidelines used to declare a barangay as drug-free? 
Are there Tutuloy-tuloy ko na lang ha, Yusik ha, para nakasulat kasi itong question ng aking uh, Yusik, kaya uh, basahin ko na lang para tuloy-tuloy na rin yung sagot mo. Pakitikno na lang ha, ulitin ko. How many barangays have been declared as drug-free to date? What are the guidelines used to declare the barangay as drug-free? Uh, are there ADACs established in these cleared barangays? Have you conducted a study as to the effectiveness of the establishment of an ADAC vis-a-vis -vis drug clearing operations in barangays. Please uh, respond, uh, Yusiki Siberi. Mr. Chair, much as I want to answer all, mukhang mas makakasagot po niya ng PIDEA because the drug clearing policy is a new policy that is uh, being implemented by Director Wilkins. But for DILG's purposes, Mr. Chair, the Anti-Drug Abuse Council as we have mentioned, is a continuous evolving system where, where we wanted so far how we could make it more responsive to, to local governments in the way that they could participate properly with what PIDEA is asking from them. Kasi PIDEA pa rin po ang head natin dito. Uh, ang PNP is more of a support. So, um, as to the policy and the drug clearing, Mr. Chair, I would yield to the opinions of PIDEA, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, PIDEA, uh, can you respond? Sinong PIDEA ngayon? Nandito. Meron tayo PIDEA? PIDEA. May buntag, Your Honor. May buntag. Kinsan eh? Vince Plaza, Your Honor. Uh, PIDEA, HR, Your Honor. Uh, okay, okay, go ahead, uh, Vince Plaza. Uh, ah, Your Honor, uh, kalagin ko lang may uh, ask for pardon for the question, Your Honor. Yeah, ang tanong dito is uh, uh, how many barangays have been cleared as drug-free to date? What are the guidelines used to declare a barangay as drug-free? May, may data ka pa dyan? Ilan ang barangay um, natin na drug-free? Sige lang. Wait, Honor. Uh, wait, Your Honor. Um, so far, Your Honor, ang uh, kulang na lang natin. At to kulang, Your Honor, nasa 40% na lang tayo for the total number of barangays nationwide. So, ang utang po natin as of this time, Your Honor, is nasa 40%. And uh, as to exact figure, Your Honor, um, for a while, Your Honor, I'll check with the uh, data na available. Sige, um, sige, go ahead. Ah, you then, mean to say 14? 14 na lang ang... 4-0 pa, Your Honor. Ha? Huh? Nasa 4-0 pa, Your Honor. 40. Cleared? Uh, utang, Your Honor. 60% pa lang ang, ang na-clear natin, Your Honor, so far. Okay, uncleared. Remaining uncleared is 40%. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, kung meron kang data dyan... Uh, uh, I'll, I'll check the specific data, Your Honor. Wait. Okay, go ahead. Uh, as to the procedure, Your Honor, and policy... May standing naman tayo, Your Honor, na policy on barangay clearing covered by the uh, dangerous uh, DDB regulation, Your Honor, na ginagamit ngayon ng, ng PDEA at DILG at DOH nationwide, Your Honor. So, yun ang sinusundan natin as of this time. And, uh, Sige, uh, while, while, while looking at uh, your records, uh, can we go back to DDB? Sir, uh, memorize mo ba yung one? Yung, yung ating criteria for uh, declaring a drug-free barangay? Uh, yes, uh, Your Honor. Actually, it is contained in uh, our uh, board regulation. No? Basically, Mr. Chair, we're looking at yung levels ng affectation. No? Dapat wala dyang uh, uh, yung nagmamanufacture, no? uh, wala rin pushing. And then, ang pinakamababang level, sir, uh, dapat wala dyang user. No? So, dapat matanggal natin lahat yun. And of course, organizationally, dapat activated yung anti-drug uh, abuse council nila at the level of the barangay. They have the following committees, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, basically, uh, it conforms with supply and demand reduction activities natin, Mr. Chair. So, merong prevention, treatment activities. At the same time, merong vigilance din. No? Merong enforcement na tinitignan tayo. Essentially, Mr. Chair, yun ang mga ang gist ng guidelines natin. And to be exact, Mr. Chair, as of uh, August uh, 31, September 2020, out of the 42,045 barangays nationwide, na-clear na po ng ating PIDEA, 20,000, uh, PIDEA and PNP, 
20,165. So what re remains to be cleared, Mr. Chair, remaining is the remaining 14,171. Konti na lang yun, Mr. Chair, and I I believe kaya natin yan, sir, uh, lalo na kung, kung ma- ma-approve itong mga bills natin to strengthen the Anti-Drug uh, uh, Abuse Council. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, may I... May Thank I, you very much. Uh, go ahead, uh, Yusek Echeverri. Thank you, sir. Uh, just to interject with what Yusek Benji has mentioned, um, yung po, yung, po yung, yung purpose ng bill na ito, isa sa naging problema po ng local government based on Dangerous Drugs Board regulation, ang, ang accountability lang pala po ng local government is number one, to a lot a substantial amount of funds, number one. Yes. Number two, to create drug prevention activities. Uh, at number three, help in the community base. Pero ito pong problema po namin, Mr. Chair, na pinoproblema po ng DILG. Kapag ba sinabi mong a lot substantial amount, ito ang pinoproblema. Ang hirap po i-audit nun. Kasi marami sa mga local government, including the barangay, they would say, pag naglaan po ako ng 1,000 peso, substantial na yan. Pag sinabi ho ng munisipyo, naglaan ako ng 5,000 peso, substantial na yan. Para sa kaneho, ang point po namin, it is so subjective. If it is subjective, magmumuka pong walang relevance in short. Ibig sabihin, any local government unit can put a small amount and that for them is substantial. Doon ho kami nagkakaproblema. Kaya tuloy, lahat ng mga activities na accountable ang mga local government, wala na sila magamit na pondo kasi para sa kanila, substantial po yun. Kaya nga po, inilagay po namin sa bill na yan at the minimum, baka naman po pwede, minimum of 2% o minimum of 5% would be given and allotted for Anti-Drug Abuse Council. Why? Eh kasi nagbigay kayo ng mandatory na 5% sa John Gender and Development. 1% sa Barangay Protection for Children. Eh, kung tinutusin nyo nga ho, eh, malita halaga lang naman ang hinihingi namin para sa ganun, lahat ng mga LGUs meron talaga nakaalat na para dyan. At yun lang po ang titignan namin. But yung sinasabi po namin is only minimum. Minimum of 2% or minimum of 5% will do. It would, it would range to that. Para ho, ang DILG, once we audit them, titignan agad namin kung pasok ka sa minimum at titignan namin, based on your activities and based on the high affectation of your area, dapat ganito ang pondo ninyo. Yan, yun, yun po yung bill na hinihingi po namin para, para sa ganun, maging responsive na ang mga LGU. Dahil hindi makakagalaw ang LGU kung walang pondo rin nung inilalaan para doon. Thank you. Thank you, Yusik Ichiberi. In line with that, uh, uh, with that statement, uh, we would like to solicit the reaction of ULAP. Kasi alam ko, uh, based on your position paper, uh, you oppose the proposed mandatory allocation of not lower than 2% of the LGU's annual appropriation. Uh, may we know from Olap? Can you respond? Kala ko meron na yung barangay kanina. Aliga na. Ah, hindi ito Olap, no? National President of, uh, ng mga barangay. Uh, LCP saan? Ano LCP? Le League of Cities, saan dito ba? So kung wala, uh, si Dr. Ellen Chua Pineda, yung President ng Liga ng mga barangay, uh, can you get your comment, ma'am? Dr. Ellen Chua Pineda, saan dito ba? Ah, oh, malis na. Oh, thank you, thank you. So, so kung wala, Mr. Huh? Chair. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, for uh, for DDB, Mr. Chair. I would just like to support the statement of you, Sec. RJ, Mr. Chair. Other programs have been allocated substantial uh, percentages, no, uh, under the internal revenue allocation. Eh, itong drugs po priority po ito, and we believe. Pag na-address po natin itong droga, marami pong ma-address. Ma yung yung sinabi kanina ni Yusek RJ, even yung uh, uh, persons deprived of liberty, mababawasan, lilit ang gasos natin. Uh, on the other hand, Mr. Chair, marami pong uh, pwedeng sakupin ang budget for drugs. No? Uh, pwede pong ilagay yan sa family programs, pwedeng ilagay sa sports, pwedeng ilagay sa health. 
no pwedeng ilagay sa livelihood programs so marami pong uh, pwedeng programa na maaring ibigay ang ating LGU pag uh, naibigay natin at least yung minimum na ipeg na natin na uh, Mr. Che kung kaya ng 5% pasok naman po lahat doon yung mga programa ng uh, ating nabanggit no so yun lang Mr. Chair uh, we hope na ma-consider sana yung proposal namin na at least uh, Mr. Chair uh, 5% minimum of 2 no pero kung kaya ng 5 Mr. Chair all the more Mr. Chair para matuldo ka na itong problema ng, ng drugs. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, Chair. Mr. Chair, just to interject also. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, uh, Yusek uh, Chiberi. There's no basis for the LGUs to to even complete at this point in time. Remember, we have the bandanas ruling now and they'll be getting more funds. Isa sa tinitingnan po ngayon ng DILG kung paano nila madadagdagan yung mga programa pwede nilang ilan. Dahil sa sobrang daming pondo makukuha nila Baka naman konting kurot lang ng konti para sa anti-illegal drug, hindi naman ho sa makakasama. Because if you will look at it, Mr. Chair, sa Regional Peace and Order Council, ang karamihan ng problema dyan, drugs eh. Pag pinag-usapan ng krimen, nakakabit ang drugs. So if you could address drugs, the crime will be even resolved. Eh ang iba pang mga issues naman ng Regional Peace and Order Council, insurgency at yung iba pa. Pero kung, kung if you'll focus on anti-illegal drug campaign, And and the and the local government will have substantial amount to fight it out. Eh, mas 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 bababa po ang krimen po natin. And I think that's the reason why we have this dangerous drugs law, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I I definitely agree with you, Yusuf uh, Chiberi. As far as this uh, the chair is concerned, uh, I agree with everything that you said, and I fully support. Kung pwede nga lang, bakit two percent lang? Bakak pwede pa nating malaki-laki ang konte. And uh, with a windfall of uh, uh, resources, uh, with a windfall of funds that uh, will be accruing to them by the Mandanas ruling, ay chiki na sa kanila itong uh, 2% na mawawala sa kanila. At uh, hindi naman ito mawawala sa kanila. They magagamit man nila ito sa problema nila sa droga. So yan ang pinaka-daunting uh, task nila ngayon. Paano, paano nila resolvahin ang problema ng droga sa kanilang lugar? So dapat uh, hindi sila mag-oppose dito. But anyway, we have to listen to their opposition. But since wala sila dito ngayon, uh, tanungin na lang natin yung DBM. And DOM at saka uh, D DBM at saka DOF. May, meron tayo dito taga DB DBM? Anybody from DBM? Good morning, uh, Mr. Chair, Senator. Yes, go ahead, DBM. Uh, thank you yeah. to that. Uh, yes, for okay, regarding, the floor. regarding po sa mandated 2% ng LG budget, huh? I'm oh. po... Sandali, sandali, ha? Pagkiklaro, lakas na mo kunti boses mo. mo at, uh, alam mo yung tinga ko sa kakaputok ng pangil, medyo, pasisya ka na, medyo bungol-bungol uh, na pa. Uh, yung ano uh, tawag nga okay uh, Mr. Chair uh, bingi 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 na bingi na uh, please go ahead uh, yeah, marinig ko na kita marinig na kita thank you uh, regarding for the mandated 2% for the LGUs to appropriate of their annual appropriations um, it is the position po of the TPN that it may be proved to be onerous po especially to those LGUs belonging to lower income classes we are the group and the LGUs will be obliged to appropriate the said amount where a delivery of similarly the important um, basic services and facilities may be significantly prejudiced. Moreover, it may be too restricted for, the, for LGUs and may be considered against the local fiscal autonomy, which is guaranteed under the 1987 Constitution and the uh, NRA number 716. Thus, we are of the opinion that the provision um, may be uh, more reasonable kung bibigyan natin ng greater flexibility yung LGUs to determine the amount which they deem is substantial or appropriate for their respective anti-drug-related programs, projects, and activities. Ayan na lang po, sir. Thank you po. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Chair. Gusto ko lang, Mr. Chair. Uh, <laughs> Dato, uh, Yusik Kitsiberi, uh, balikan ko mo muna yung DBM. Uh, gu gusto ko lang marinig uh, 
agree kayo dito hindi di ko masyado putol-putol yung narinig ko eh Mr. Chair if I may uh, DDB yeah. uh, uh, with with all sa- you Sandal lang sandali lang uh, DDB uh, balikan ko lang muna DBM Ma'am DBM Hello Sandal ka ba Yes Mr. Chair yeah, hindi ko masyado narinig uh, ano uh, gusto ko lang makuha kung agree kayo dito o hindi Um we are opposed po of mandating the LGUs to up to um appropriate a certain percentage. Um we want po na they they are given flexibility po in to appropriating po funds. So instead pa of um saying na two percent, they may appropriate the um needed amount chargeable chargeable to their local funds and lang to the teacher we're, we're not opposed um for it to be um not chargeable to the local local funds we are opposed for fixing um a certain percentage so we are um proposing or recommending for that the LGUs be given the flexibility since they um they know naman po in their local jurisdictions what is needed for Ayan po, sir. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Oh, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. DBM. Um, back to Yusik uh, Echeberry. Go ahead. Mr. Mr. Chair, I hope, I hope DBM looks into the fact that there's already a Mandanas ruling wherein the local government will be having more funds. Doon nga ho kami ngayon na mong problema eh, kung paano namin igagayit ang mga local governments on how to spend the excesses, excessive funds that they'll be getting. Second, Mr. Chair, if you will analyze Um, the other mandatory uh, allocation of budgets of LGU, namely the gender and development, which is 5%, and the barangay and the, and the protection for children, which is just 1%. Uh, ang tanong ko nga, ito nga, medyo malabo pa nga on how, they, how the local governments would implement it. Pero all I'm saying, Mr. Chair, this administration's priority, by this time, naiintindihan sana, na anti-illegal drug is an issue. Now, if we could at least allot just a fund na mandatory, mas, ma- mas ma- mapapaga ng trabaho po namin in auditing. Why? Because again, even if you gave a leverage of, of, of parang allowance for local government, under the premise of substantial amount, as I have mentioned, kahit maglagay sila ng 1,000 dyan at i-justify nilang substantial yan, how can we say no? Kasi napaka-subjective ng substantial amount. We need at least a minimum amount that all LGU should observe para sa ganun, meron at meron na talagang pondong ininakalaan para sa community-based drug rehab at reintegration at lahat ng mga campaign para makaiwas sa illegal na droga. Because again, the fight here is not just supply but prevention. We are fighting for the prevention, Mr. Chair. Kaya nga, if this will not be given, again, babalik ulit tayo sa sistema dati, which is not working at all. No? Ito yung nakita namin policy gap eh. Sa panahon lang ni Presidente Duterte ito, nakita nga ho namin yung policy gap. Na the, 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 the allocation for substantial amount is not really working for LGU. You have to allot as a fixed amount for them. Minimum lang ho, ha? hindi ko sinasabi yun na. Minimum fixed amount para sa ganun persado silang maglaan ng 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 ganitong amount at ang trabaho naman namin sa DILG tingnan kung itong mga amount na to ay nagastos ng maayos pero kapag bumalik tayo sa substantial amount Mr. Chair ang mangyayari uli sa amin may mga LGUs diyan even barangay maglalagay yan ng zero why because for them they don't have enough funds they will always justify that more so yung mga narco politician na mayor at mga barangay pag sinabi na lang zero wala tayong magagawa eh para sa kanila, substantial yun eh. Wala silang pondo. They will always make that as an excuse. That's what we don't want. We want all LGUs to allot automatically. Para sa ganun, kami, audit agad. Gawin nyo agad itong mga programang ito. But if you will say substantial, parang sinabi nyo sa amin, habuli namin sila on the matter na subjective, Mr. Chair. We want a defined, definite, definite guidance on this matter because as I've said, Mr. Chair, this has been... This has been happening for the longest time and it's not working for us. Ah, kung kuha natin yung punto mo, uh, Yusi Kitsibere. Uh, alam mo, ito, bigyan kita ng senaryo. 
Paano kung yung isang barangay kapitan ay kumukulikta doon sa mga drug syndicate sa kanyang barangay? Uh, yun yung mga involved na barangay kapitan o kaya yung mayor na involved sa drugs ay hindi lang siguro zero ang ibibigay noon kundi baka nihaw niho wala ka talaga marinig doon. So ano mangyari sa barangay sa kanyang barangay o sa kanyang kinasakupan? Malabo talaga mangyari yan. Anyway, we, 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 we got your point. Uh, pakinggan muna natin si Atty. Gilbert uh, Espinosa ng DOF. Uh, your opinion, uh, Atty. Espinosa, please. You have yes, the floor. Good morning, uh, Senator. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, yes, we've been uh, listening to the, uh, to the discussion. And uh, as far as the DOF is concerned, uh, uh, regarding the revenue allotment, uh, it's not really a, a matter of uh, for us to decide as, for as long as the the Senate deems it uh, in its wisdom to to spend the the budget in this way. The concern of DOF is more on funding all of these uh, projects. Uh, the Mandana's ruling was mentioned. Attorney, attorney, uh, for a while, attorney. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, nasa office ka ba? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Ba, ba, baka wala kang kasama diyan tanggalin mo kunti yung yeah. ano, yung oh yeah para marinig ka namin nagma-muffle yung uh, sound si eh. ang ganda pala ng bigote mo eh <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> para, <laughs> para klaro sige go ahead. Uh, please with my uh, mask uh, as i was saying uh, the mandanas ruling was mentioned and that uh, the budget for this would be coming from the IRA uh, it's a matter that's not really within the, the sphere of the DOF to have an opinion on because uh, as long as you pass the law and uh, you need this funds, it's, it's a matter for our department to look for funding, uh, uh, Mr. Senator. So uh, we will just leave it at that, that the DOF does not have uh, an opinion on this uh, 2%, but we would like to express uh, the department's support for the bills that are pending now, uh, Mr. Senator. Thank you, Mr. Senator. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, position of yours, uh, DOF. Maraming salamat, Attorney, for your, opinion, uh, for your uh, uh, comments. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So, uh, gusto magsalita ni Juan, ni Yusik uh, Santos, uh, Yusik Reyes, ng uh, DDB. Please, go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just to add, Mr. Chair, we have been implementing Republic Act 9165 since 2002. It's been 19 years, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, the first uh, uh, strengthening of uh, Barangay Anti-Drug Abuse Council uh, memorandum circular was issued by Secretary Lina. No? Ang tagal na yan, Mr. Chair. But again, uh, gusto ko lang susugan yung sinabi ni Yusek RJ. Uh, hindi talaga nag-i-epekto, Mr. Chair. In fact, uh, again, 2016, 4 million dumadami no and uh, if we continue towards uh, this path mr chair and we will not amend and provide specific allocation in percentage mr chair then we will find ourselves uh, in the same situation uh, in the next administration mr chair no yun lang mr chair uh, again uh, with uh, indulgence to our good friend from uh, dbm uh, i hope they reconsider no our uh, proposal thank you mr chair Thank you, sir. Uh, maraming salamat po. Uh, how, uh, how about the PNP? Uh, any comment about this? Uh, wala kayo opinion about this? No, sir. Uh, we we'll just support, sir, kasi kung mapansin nyo naman po, sir, yung, yung PNP, when it comes to the rehabilitations, we are on this support, sir. We are, we are focused more on the the supply reduction, sir. As to the, this one, sir, kung kailangan po yung assistance namin, uh, we will provide. But we are not the uh, number one implementer of rehabilitation, sir. In, anyway, kayo man talagang nasa, nasa ground, you are yes, in touch with reality. Kasi yes. kayo man nandun sa mga umiikot sa mga barangay. Uh, ano nakita nyo sa mga barangay anti-drug abuse council sa mga barangay na napuntahan nyo? Aktibo ba sila with or without this sa uh, 2%? Um, uh, actually, sir, tama yung sinabi nyo kanina po, sir, na pag yung mayor po ay very active and supportive, yung pong uh, anti-drug uh, abuse council, sir, ay very active. 
kagaya rito sir sa Metro Manila, let's say it's sa Metro Manila. So, pag ang mayor sir ay active, napupunduhan po niya yan. At ang pondo, it varies upon the, the mayor's discretion. Yung mga iba naman sir, lalo na sa mga, mga sa Visayas and Mindanao, usually, hindi masyado active. Kasi kung nasa sa ADAC po sir, ang PNP po sir, ay hindi na po direct member doon sa bagong setup ng ng uh, DI, uh, DILG. Hindi na po kami member doon sir. Parang support role na lang kami. So, uh, yun yung observation namin dyan sir. Kung hindi talaga active yung mayor at parang wala siyang pakialam, hindi siya mag-allocate ng po doon. So, we will support the stand of the DILG na dapat specific yung pondo na ibigay doon sir para meron talagang kuhan. Kasi pati kami sir, pag pupunta kami doon, mag-consult sa kami, kami sa nila. Lalo na dyan sa Uh, barangay drug clearing na yan na kailangan yung barangay captain usually pag walang pondo walang walang ano to walang assessment so ang ginagamit is yung PNP assessment na nalang nadalhin pataas depende po talaga sir kung meron talaga sir oh, pwede nang din sabihin na ba meron to nasa batas na bigyan nyo kami bigyan mo kami uh, gawin natin yan kasi may pondo mas madali i-activate yung drug council po sir Okay, Mr. thank you. Mr. Thank you Mr. Chair. Time. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. You say Kichibere. Uh, uh, just, kung may epekto ba, <clears throat> simula po nung nag-umpisa tayo sa kampanyang ito of monitoring yung functionality, ah, hindi lang pag-organisa ng Anti-Drug Abuse Council, yung functionality niya. Yun po napansin namin, Mr. Chair. Madali mag-organisa, pero kailangan gumagalaw siya. So, ito po yung ginawa ng Dangerous Drugs Board's Policy naglaan ng mga activities para ma-assess po namin ang mga LGU maging effective at functional. Nung inupisan ho namin yan at minomonitor ho namin yan at nag-file rin po ako ng mga kaso sa Ombudsman, naging aktibo ang mga badak, naging aktibo ang mga adak. Kaya lang po, Mr. Chair, nung tinanong po namin ng PNP PDEA, nakatulong po ba? Nag mas malaking tulong at napadali po ang trabaho nila. Bakit po? Tandaan nyo po, dun sa badak po, yung mga pagsusumbong ng mga badak sa mga drug addict at drug pusher. May coordination sa police. Um, I just would want to correct, no? yung, adak, yung adak composition natin kasama ang police dyan. Hindi pwede mawala ang uh, Philippine National Police. Kung wala dyan, ilalagay po natin uli yan. Hindi pwede kasi mawala because what we're trying to replicate here, Mr. Chair, is the experience in Davao City na kung saan si Mayor Duterte, you yourself, and PIDEA are closely working together. You, that's what we're replicating in the ADAC functionality indicators ng ADAC bill. Because we want close participation between PNP, PIDEA, and, and the local government in terms of submitting the names ng mga drug user, drug pusher, at ina-assess po yan. May proseso po yan. And, and that is what, what we're trying to replicate in the ADAC bill and to institutionalize it, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Yusek. It's a very... In line with that, uh, can we request you to give us the input, yung gusto mong uh, composition ng ADAC at all labels para eh, ma-incorporate natin dito sa batas na ito, yung mga composition. Kasi sabi ni, as of now, yung mga ADAC ngayon, sabi ni Chief PNP, hindi na daw membro ang uh, PNP. So, with this law, institutionalize natin yeah. na kasama na doon ng PNP. Sir, sir, yeah, the, yeah, DIL, the DILG version, kasama po parati ang PNP at PDEA doon. Uh, siguro kasi marami na hong Senate, marami na hong kasi version eh. May House version na, may Senate version. But yung DILG version po na sinabit namin kasama PNP. Well, uh, yeah, uh, as, as uh, confirmation to that, And dito man, meron tayong Barangay Anti-Drug Abuse Council, BADAC, composition. Chairperson po ng barangay, Vice Chairman, Sangguniang Barangay Member, Kagawad uh, Chairman of Peace and Order. Members, Sangguniang Barangay Member, Kagawad Chairman of Women and Family. SK Chairperson, Public School Principal or Representative, Executive Officer, Chief Tanod. At least two representatives of NGO, civil society, representative of, of faith-based organization, advisor, 
City Municipal Chief of Police Representative or Representative. So meaning, uh, huh? Wala. Oh, sa, sa barangay ito, ha? Advisor ang uh, Chief of Police or Race Representative. Sa MADAC naman, Municipal Drug Abuse Council, Vice Chairperson dito ang Chief of Police ng uh, Munisipyo. Oh, so, kasama pala talaga. Sa barangay, sir, hindi kami kasama, sir. Sa barangay, kasama kayo dito as advisor. As advisor, sir. Yes, sir. But so, usually, pag nagkukonvince sila, sir, as per experience ko, sir, I've been RD in Cebu, hindi lang, sir, uh, tinatawag yung barangay, ano, uh, Chief of Police. Doon na lang yan, sir, sa Chief of Police. Doon na sa national. Sa Unlike Madak, before. Oh, sa munisipyo. Oh, sir. Sa barangay, oh, sir. Oh, advisor kayo doon kasama pero yes, kasama sir. pa rin sa composition yes, sa advisor so you 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 insist to padala ka ng representative doon sa mga barangay yes sir kung makukover niyo pero pag hindi niyo makover i don't know how you how will you do that but anyway at least mr uh, chair uh, yeah yes go ahead mr chair mahalaga po yung yung police at pdea involved in in the badak why kasi ho naalala ho niyo di ba yung yung programa ho natin sa DILG na Uh, masa masid <laughs> di ba na natanggal pa ng pondo ito yung pagsusumbong ng mga ng mga tao ng mga citizen doon sa mga involved sa illegal drugs at ito kapag nagsumbong ang manggagaling ang impormasyon sa badak eh sa barangay ito ay dumadaan sa proseso ng ng uh, check ng checking ng police at PDEA kung totoo so yun po yung yung proseso kaya mahalagang mahalaga ang partisipasyon ng PDEA at police sa barangay kasi doon ang basis po natin eh kung saan natin makukuha ang mga impormasyon ng mga drug user, drug pusher at drug lord, Mr. Chair. Thank you, thank you, uh, Yusek Echeverry. Uh, maraming salamat. Mr. Chair, if I may add. Uh, go ahead, Chair, go ahead. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, naalala ko lang, Mr. Chair, In our proposal, Mr. Chair, which was adopted sa lower house version, I don't know, sir, kung naipasok natin, sir, sa sa Senate version, Mr. Chair, we were also proposing for creation of plantilla positions for the anti-drug abuse offices. Again, Mr. Chair, the reason why we proposed that, Mr. Chair, we found, no, na pag nagpalit yung local chief executive, Mr. Chair. Wala na, back to zero. Hindi alam yung mga programa natin. And we believe, again, to institutionalize Mr. Chair no, and to strengthen itong uh, ating Anti-Drug Abuse Council, uh, dapat talaga, Mr. Chair, merong specific unit, may plantilla position. No? And ito yun, Mr. Chair. That's the reason why we have been requesting at least 5%, Mr. Chair. No? Uh, anyway, uh, it will address so many issues, Mr. Chair. Peace and order, help. Uh, everything, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Dinagdag uh, ko lang, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, just to add also, Mr. Chair. Yes, go ahead. Yung sinabi ho ni Yusek Benji, Mr. Chair, isa yan sa naging issue, if you remember, Mr. Chair, na naging issue ni Vice President Roberto sa atin, na wala tayong baselining. Yung baselining na sinasabi na information gathering. Eh sabi nga namin, paano nga tayo makakakuha ng accurate na records kung yung mga opisina ng mga LGU na hinihingan natin ng impormasyon, eh talagang nawawala. Bakit? Eh syempre, pag natalo yung mayor o natalo yung municipal mayor, syempre palit rin agad yung mga natrain na po namin yan. Ha? Mga natrain na namin na officers on how to gather information. Mahalaga-mahalaga yung data gathering because this, is, will be, this will be our basis of checking whether we are improving in the war or in the fight against illegal drugs. So how many have we rehabilitated? How many, we have, how many community-based drug rehab we have rehabilitated? Ilan na nag-relapse? Ilan ang mga nahuli? Ilan yung mga... So these are matters which, which the Anti-Drug Abuse Office should be, should be um, focusing on, Mr. Chair. But since, since elections are happening in the local government every three years, You don't expect these people who were appointed by the mayor will stay and will be reappointed again by the new mayor or by the new barangay captain. That's why we were asking at least a permanent office so that the national government, meaning DDB, who has the repository of all information, at DILG, na kung saan assisting DILG in gathering, DDB in gathering the information, 
will have ease of, of gathering all this data. That's why, Mr. Chair, we really need a permanent office. As a good example, Mr. Chair, meron na ang Cebu City. Meron na rin ang Caloocan City. Ang Cebu City created a, uh, an ordinance for an office, permanent office, including Caloocan City. Nagkaroon na rin ng office para dyan. Pero what we're asking is that there should be a mandatory uh, creation of an office that is permanent and connected with PIDEA, DDB, and the Philippine National Police and together with the ILG, Mr. Chair. Yeah, uh, you're, you're correct, uh, Yusik Echeverry. In fact, uh, dito nga sa Senate Bill 1952, nakalagay naman pala dito, uh, establishment of anti-drug abuse office. All local government units uh, except barangays shall create an anti-drug abuse office with tantilia positions with the following function. Serve as secretariat of the anti-drug abuse councils. Provide technical and administrative support services to the ADAC and perform other functions as may be prescribed by ADAC. So, andito tayo. Mayroon tayong plantilla position at the municipal level. Except lang doon sa barangay. So, here we go. Uh, thank you. Marami na tayong nakukover. Uh... Sure, hindi lang po sa munisipyo po yan, ha? Province ah, no, and no? Hindi lang po sa munisipyo ang opisina, province and highly urbanized city, Mr. Chair. Yes, yes. Ah, andito yun. Kasama na yun. Do, do we have DILG here? Ah, DOJ, DOJ? DILG, DOJ. Si Atorne, sino bang DOJ natin? Your Honor, good afternoon po. Yes, uh, State Council uh, Charles Romulos Cambaliza. C can you give us a, an, uh, a legal opinion on the fiscal autonomy? Yung nagbabanggaan na uh, uh, opinion ng DBM at saka ng DILG. Uh, uh, kung meron ka, kung may available ka dyan about fiscal autonomy. Thank you, thank you, uh, sir. Sige pa. Actually, Your Honor, meron po kaming sinabit na position paper and it did not tackle the issue of fiscal autonomy. Pero po, if the chair would like me to read and to be summarized for the record our position on actually all of the matters which are submitted for our comment, uh, I'll be happy to indulge the committee po. Notably po yung comment namin would be on yung na-mention po earlier yung decriminalization po ng use of illegal drugs and yung po sa establishment of drug rehab centers. Thank you very much. Uh, Kasamating lang kasi nitong kwan yung, yes, yung inyong uh, opinion uh, pagkakawal ng sekretaryat ito. Uh, maraming salamat, sir. Maraming salamat. So okay na po, Your Honor? Ya, yeah, ya, yeah, okay na. Andito na sa sinabit ninyo. Pag-aralan na ito na sekretaryat. Thank you. Thank you po. Thank you very much. Marami pang questions dito pero uh, I think uh, na-discuss na ito ng DILJ at saka ng DDB yung kanilang mga sa kanilang mga positions kanina. Uh, balik lang ako sa DILJ if uh, are you aware of this uh, nangyari in 2019 uh, Yusek Juan Saturnino Santiago a BADA coordinator in Valenzuela was arrested by the NBI after an entrapment operation for extorting money from victims and threatening to include them in the drugs watch list should they not heed to his request? May we know what actions were taken against uh, him? Uh, what safeguards do you recommend to avoid such unfortunate incident? Uh, are you aware of other similar incidents wherein the establishment of ADAC was used as a means of corruption? Uh, ito, ito, bantayan natin ito. Uh, aware ka ba nito? You think it's a very? Sir, we were aware and I think the Philippine National Police has acted on the matter. But on the part of the DILG, kasama ho sa mandate ho namin, magsampan ng mga kaso sa, sa mga local government 
for those who have not organized and make their ADAC functional, including all corruption issues, Mr. Chair. Last 2017, 2018, nagsampa po tayo ng mga kaso sa ombudsman. Marami rin hong na-dismiss. Bakit? Kasi ho, nalaman rin nila eventually that the base, my basis, which is the ADAC, is just a memorandum circular, Mr. Chair. So walang legal basis na pinangahawakan. That's why dumudulog po ako na ito ay maisa ay batas na. Because by creating an ADAC, ano hong basis ho niyan? It's just a memorandum circular by the DILG. Eh, utos ng presidente, tingnan kung talaga nagtatrabaho itong mga LGU at uh, ginagawang uh, yung kanilang tungkulin. Nung nakita ho namin, hindi nag-organisa based on DDB regulation, hindi rin ginawang functional. Hindi sinampan ho namin. And there are more or less 1,000 to 2,000 of them, Mr. Chair, na nasa ombudsman. And then we are now planning to file a second set of, of uh, local governments for, for not making their ADAC and BADAC functional, Mr. Chair. So continuous po every year ang filing ho ng cases namin and case build up, including the narco-politicians, Mr. Chair. Yung si binanggit ho ni Mr. D. President ng mga narco-politicians, including Congressman, I filed cases against them on behalf of the department. So so kung yung, yung to be responsive to your question, Mr. Chair, yes, the Department of Interior Local Government is not remiss on filing cases against erring local government officials as what you have mentioned, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, nice to hear that uh, comment. Uh, meron tayong isa pang issue dito na itatakil. Uh, according to EO number 15, series of 2017, the Interagency Committee on Anti-Illegal Drugs is tasked to ensure the comprehensive implementation of the barangay drug clearing operations. What is the institutional relationship between the existing Anti-Drug Abuse Council and the Interagency Committee on Anti-Illegal Drugs? Once institutionalized, would you recommend the ADACs to be under the authority of the ICAD? Uh, Mr. Please uh, Mr. respond. Yeah. Mr. Yeah, Chair, the ICAD is more of a whole government approach without sacrificing the mandates of each agency. So it's more of proper coordination between agencies. Kaya po namin nabuo lahat itong mga suwestyon at magagandang mga idea dahil may ICAD. At uh, hindi ho mawawa, mawawa, pag nagawa itong batas na ito, hindi ho naman mawawala ang ICAD. Meaning, hindi siya pwede masailalim sa, well, maaari po magamit ng ICAD itong ADAC uh, law na to to further intensify its campaign under the respective agency's mandate, Mr. Chair. So the answer is, yes, it can be a tool by ICAD. Uh, and besides, Mr. Chair, ICAD is just an executive order. Kapag, kapag may bagong presidente yan, pag ginusto na hindi implement ang ICAD, wala tayong magagawa. Pero yung ADAC, mananatili, Mr. Chair. Okay, that's, that's very clear. Uh, walang duplication of functions dito, ha? Walang magiging duplication of functions. Mr. Chair, if I just may susugan po ang sinabi ni Yusik uh, Echeverry. Go ahead, please. Go ahead. Um, you have the floor. Mr. Chair, hindi po talaga siguro magka, magkaroon ng overlapping function si ADAC at saka si ICAD po. Dahil po si ICAD po, ang pinaka-function lang talaga niya ay parang taga-masid. Kung totoo ba ang na-integrate uh, based sa utos ni Presidente, yung lahat ng mga program, especially po yung na-conceptualize under po sa Philippine Anti-Drug Strategy natin na tinataguyod ng DDB. So, tagamasid po talaga si ICA dahil it, ang mga member agency po na nandito ay yun po yung mga implementing agency na mga programang nakalista po kay uh, DDB. So, isa na din po doon yung mga posibleng ini-implement ng uh, uh, ADAC programs. Pwede din po siyang tingnan ni ICA at magkaroon ng tulong with the other government agencies at tama po si Yusik RJ po doon, ito po yung nag uh, bo in ng lahat ng mga effort ng government agency to achieve the whole of nation na uh, approach, uh, Your Honor. At 
So sugal ko po yung sinabi kanina ni Yusik Aji po, uh, the agency express ko lang po yung support ng ahensya po doon sa Adaklo na po yan because that will give today uh, most especially an easy way to implement its barangay drug clearing program. Kung may Adaklo po, mas uh, mas mabilis nating maipa-implement yung ating programa po sa barangay natin. At present your honor updated lang po uh, update po doon sa ating uh, barangay drug clearing Uh, status po, we still have to clear around 33% barangays po, Your Honor. That's around 13,928 as of January po, Your Honor. Kaya medyo marami-rami pa po, Your Honor. Kung yung, yung ADAC law na po yan ay ma-aprobahan po, uh, baka mas speed up natin yung pag-clear ng ating mga barangay para po menos na po yung problema natin, Your Honor. Nagang salamat. Thank you, uh, Vince Plaza. Um, alam mo, uh, kung tingin mo, kung mabilis natin itong masya batas, itong adak law na ito, kaya rin pa ba before the term ends ng uh, Duterte administration, makamit natin yung uh, 100% uh, cleared barangays? What do you think? Your Honor, kami nila Yusik Benji at Yusik RJ ay masyado, masyado kaming positive na with all the mechanisms in place. Your Honor, talagang na problema lang tayo in the past na mechanism on rehab, mechanism on ADAC ay absent. Kaya hindi natin ma-push truly yung ating pag-clear ng mga barangay, Your Honor. And naniniwala kami uh, with this uh, effort na pag na-approve yung Matagal na po pinag-usapan sa table yung dream ni Yusik RJ na pag sana meron yan, Your Honor, baka maka, maka zero po tayo ng goal bago po magtapos si Presidente. Maraming salamat. Uh, thank you for uh, your optimism. Thank you for your optimism. Uh, We believe, Your Honor. Kayang-kaya natin ito sa totoo lang. Kahit na nga walang, wala yung mga... Anyway, mahirap na magsalita. Basta, <laughs> <laughs> Basta gawin natin ang kaya natin gawin. Di ba? Tumatawa si General uh, Debold Sinas. Uh, tumatawa siya. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, comment. Siguro we have... Uh, well, ah, gusto ko lang sana talagang makapag... Uh, kwan? Makapag... Uh, makapag... Uh, comment itong... Kwan? Why the opposition coming from the... ULAP coming from the League of Municipalities about the 2% para kaso hindi pa sila nagpapakita. Dapat andito sila para marinig natin yung kanilang opposition. Bakit? Kasi uh, anyway, since wala sila dito, then uh, well, this bill will not stop from uh, rolling kung uh, hindi sila magpakita. So, from here, I think we have discussed a lot of things already. Uh, maybe we can uh, adjourn and uh, just form a technical working uh, group to to improve this bill. Lalong-lalo na from DDB, uh, DDB and uh, uh, from uh, DILG, Yosek uh, we, we really need your inputs para... Maganda itong kalalabasan ng batas na ito. And also, PDEA, uh, PNP. Kayo man talaga mga main players dito. PDEA, PNP, DDB, uh, DILG, and uh, yung mga local governments, uh, sana. But anyway, uh, again, uh, I would like to thank you. Maraming salamat sa inyong pag-attend. Your uh, valuable inputs are very much appreciated in crafting this bill. Uh, sana huwag kayo magsawang uh, mag-attend uh, pag magpatawag tayo ng uh, hearings. Uh, thank you very much to General Debold Sinas for bringing your uh, uh, whole staff. Hindi ba kumplito pero yung uh, pertinent staff na kinakailangan natin nandito. Wala na kayo sabihin. Huh? General Ludan, General Lee, General Magdai. Uh, ako may sasabihin. Hindi pa niyo ako binlo out diyan sa inyong promosyon ha nag nagsipag general na kayo. Nagsipag general na kayo, hindi pa kayo nag out sa akin. Ah. Ah, uh, oh, to, 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 to si Chipin pe, oh. Nag-approve. Kaya you owe me uh, blow out. 
So, sir, maraming salamat. Yusik Itsiberi. Uh, uh, sir uh, Santos. Uh, Ries. Santos, Santos. Ako na Santos. Ries and uh, uh, si Pidia natin. Uh, General Sermonia. Uh, DBM. Uh, DOJ. Uh, NBI. Uh, uh, Department of Finance. DOH, oy na si DOH pala. Maraming maraming salamat sa inyong lahat and uh, from here uh, I think the adjourn natin. Adjourn. Yeah. Uh, we will form the DWG and uh, this uh, hearing is uh, adjourned.